Hey everyone, what's up? This is Uri for Gorilla Poker and I saw a crazy hand played by Linus and it's so crazy. Looking at it, I felt like it couldn't be right. So we're going to review that today. I'm going to walk you guys through the hand and it really feels like this is a street poker hand, a non-GTO hand. I have no clue what Linus was doing. It'd be really interesting to find out and just to put this out there. This hand looks completely off the rails to me, but experience does tell us that Linus has this habit of getting stuff right. So he's probably right and I'm probably wrong, but this time he's going to be wrong. So let's look at the hand. 200, 400 with anti, GG network, Melhui uh, raises to $1,000 from the hijack, actually has to be UTG. Uh, Linus three bets pocket jacks. Melhui calls. Three bet size is 4.4x, but there is anti, so this is more like a 4x three bet. And this is like a 2.5x open, but due to anti, it's more like a smaller open. There are lots of, of nuances here that are tough to model, and unless you have very accurate ranges. And yeah, we get a 3572 tone board, three bet pot, uh, 100 blinds deep, again, a bit less due to anti's. Linus selects to go for a half pot size. Now, uh, when I see 3572 tone, 3 bet pot big blind versus UTG, it's a board that both players' ranges miss a lot. So generally, Linus cannot range bet, and he also doesn't want to bet small. He can't range bet because his range has too many uh, unpaired hands that miss. So his range isn't strong enough, and were he to range bet, his opponent can react very, very aggressively, probably stacking off every pair and, and stuff like this. It doesn't make sense to bet small because on a very low board, when you bet very small, your opponent kind of just gets pot odds to continue hands like ace queen and king queen and, and sometimes lower than that just to try to hit a pair. And he ends up having almost no fold range. So half pot size from Linus, uh, I think, makes perfect sense. It's a good size. And he has to split his range between betting and checking. So he has to play some hands defensively, give up some hands, and, and continue aggressively with half of his range. Very normal situation. So half pot flop, turn six of spades. Now six of spades, well, we always look at what does a turn change and who's it good for. This is definitely a very bad card for Linus. His opponent can have pocket fours, pocket sixes, five six suited, six seven suited, eight nine suited, pocket eights and pocket nines pick up equity really terrible card and generally speaking i would expect linus to have almost no bets on this card but linus goes for a half pot bet which feels very off to me i'm very very surprised i would have guessed zero percent betting mel who he goes all in which is also very surprising to me because the board's a bit locked down right like there's not that many hands uh, that have a lot of equity it's a very way ahead, way behind kind of spot where for Linus to even bet half pot, I'd imagine he needs to have something. I don't know if aces is good enough to bet half pot. So maybe like ace four or, or his own eight nine or, or what does he have for value? And then there are no effective draws against that, not that many. So I wouldn't think shoving is a thing, but he does shove and Linus tanks and makes the call and the hands are turned face up and Mel, who he has ace of clubs, queen of clubs which I think pre-flop makes sense, flop makes sense, turn shove, personally, I don't think is a thing. I'd never do that with this hand. It seems just wrong to me, uh, both combo choice and the shove. And Linus shows up with pocket jacks, no club, which to me, guys, looks completely bananas, way overplayed hand. And it looks like he soul read the shove for what it was. He was like, you know what? You wouldn't shove value here. So must be some kind of bluff. So I'm calling. Uh, but Jax isn't even good enough to bet in my eyes. So I'm very, very surprised by what's going on here. The only argument I can make for Linus is maybe due to the positions he thinks his opponent doesn't have all the low pairs and suited connectors, but I, I don't think that's correct. And yeah, we'll load up a sim and take a look. So uh, I'm going to go small blind versus MP rather than small blind versus UTG reason for that like i said i don't have the most accurate ranges but because this has anti ranges tend to be a bit wider for opening because there's less dead money so i think this is probably 
more correct than looking at the UTG range. The in position calling range versus a three bet would look something like this. And this is what's well, so weird to me because after the turn sixes and six seven improved, looks like there is little eight nine and ace four improves and four five improves and just feels like it's too much and, and you can't keep barreling. Definitely not with jacks. But yeah, let's take a look. Flop strategy from Linus. So 60% betting, like I was saying, you can't bet everything. Pocket jacks and tens and nines have more of a betting preference than queens and kings because they benefit from protection more. Lots of hands kind of split. So some of these are defending the checking range and some of these are just checking, like King Jack of Diamonds. Uh, and yeah, we have a half pot bet. No raising, ace, queen of clubs, always call in. So far, so good. You guys might be surprised to see ace can actually start folding a little bit because ranges are just so tight and all your low pairs are better than eight. So this is like your worst pocket pair. Normally you'd fold threes if it's eight, five, four. But here you fold eights. This is the worst pair in your range. So yeah, half pot call. And the turn was the six of spades. Here I would have expected to see no betting whatsoever because it's such a terrible turn card. But it looks like the solver disagrees with me. And Jax can bet. I'm very shocked. Jax have 60% equity. But were you to open shove and get called? Jax would have 30% equity. But somehow there's like enough juice in the pot where you can just bet. So here I, I put a slightly larger than half pot bet and, and jacks are still betting. Like I said, the, the sim isn't meant to mirror anything exactly. But yeah, I'm very, very surprised. Very surprised. Well played, Linus. I, I would have thought, you know, when, when you look at can hit control H in this program and be like, what does the out of position player's EV look like per card? And you can see these big red bars, four and six are terrible for out of position, the worst cards in a deck. And if you look at out of position strategy, uh, the lowest betting volume is on a four and a six, but it's still there. So something about not having that much behind. So Linus bets his pocket jacks and there is actually a shove here. Like I said, it's a bit surprising to me. Ace queen of clubs shouldn't be the hand doing it either way. You go with like some straights and value range and then some hands that uh, it's tough to explain. Like, you can go, which hands are shoving as a bluff here. Looks like hands like 7, 8, 9, 7, pocket 9s, pocket queens, maybe ace 9 or ace queens, low frequency or 10 9 of clubs. But ace queen of clubs, you just really want to see rivers, and it, it, it's just not the hand type. Uh, kind, kind of too strong to, to go with as a bluff. But yeah, we have the shove either way. Should Jax be calling this shove? Look at the range before you answer and think. And what you'll see is that the shoving range should contain queens, but it should also contain nines and seven, eight and nine, seven. So plus Jax has equity versus two pairs. It's really close. It's probably just close when, when I look at this range. So we have the shove, we have the call. Does Jax call? Yes. Jax is actually just a GTO call. Tens is mixed, nines is mixed, jacks is pure calling. What's the difference between jacks and tens? I know in position shoving 10 nine suited. It's small things. Or ace 10 of clubs. Like jacks is just a little bit stronger. But yeah, incredible. I'm shocked, guys. Uh, Linus nails another one. And if we are kind of to take something away for our understanding of the spot, I'll show you guys something really cool. Why does Linus have a betting range? So what's the idea? The idea is to bet jacks and then if you get like a 10 of diamonds river to shove jacks in. And after you get called, have 37% equity. And this only works when there's not that much money behind. So the cool thing you can do here is you can take the turn, turn six, and play around with the parameters a bit. So we're going to do that. Uh, we create a subtree. And we're like, what does it take to make Jax no longer a, a bet, right? Now the pot is 4,200 and we have roughly 2x pot behind. 
what if we had a bit more behind? So 4,200, but there's 10k, 2.5x pot behind. Can we still bet jacks on a turn? And as we get deeper and deeper, the answer starts becoming probably not. But let's see how deep. So we add a little bit and you see jacks drops to almost zero and now the threshold is queens. Change it to 12k. And this is an important experiment just to, to understand the concept of what's going on here. So change it to 12k and now jacks never bets and queen starts betting less. And as you go deeper and deeper, the fact that the hand isn't the nuts and won't have good equity when all the money goes in becomes worse and worse for you. And at some point you might get a range check for Linus. But yeah, note at this SPR, and that's a very nuanced thing and very important to understand about three bet pots that the scare card isn't as scary. You can just go and pile it in with over pairs on low runouts. Amazing. Now, of course, there are other things we can change here. If we thought in position player was defending full frequency of all the pairs, preflop and all the suited connectors, like a more stationary player, we could fiddle around with that and, and just give them full, I mean, these hands are all in the range, but they kind of mix open and mix defend versus three bet. Uh, but yeah, add them in more and go back down to 8,000 like we were starting out and boom. 0% bets. So look how sensitive to inputs these things are. And of course, nobody plays like a bot. You know, my preflop ranges aren't even accurate, but you guys can see how it's about how much nuts you have and how much money there is behind and these things interface with each other. Linus getting major points for this one. Very well played. Uh, his opponent, you know, small mistake, wrong combo to shove, not a huge EV mistake, but, but it is one. And also a conceptual one, like that's not a, a hand you should think about shoving with. And yeah, let's wrap up here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Another masterclass by Linus. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys next time.